we challenged ourselves to radically work on our sleep schedules. Sleep is so important for our bodies to function well, but we often don't prioritize it. So I am going to challenge myself to a two week challenge that I hope to turn into a habit beyond that. My goal is to get eight hours of sleep. So for the first week, my goal is going to be going to bed at midnight and waking up at eight. I'm still on vacation right now, and so I want to be able to stay up a little bit later, but I am wanting to get back into a sleep pattern, and so I am starting with that. Starting next week, I have to go back to work. And so my second week of the challenge is going to be being asleep by 11 p.m. and getting up at 7. Check in and see how I do on my challenges. Back in the day, I used to be a morning person. Enter 15 years of really bad insomnia, having babies, the newborn days, life in general, and it's been a very long time since I've gotten that amount of sleep. And the way that the lack of sleep can affect not only your physical body, but your brain, your mental health, your thought processes, your memory, it's not fun. For a long time, I've wanted to kind of work on my sleep patterns and come back to a better place for my body. But when I was getting on average four hours of sleep a night, sometimes more, sometimes less, I really did not want to mess with that too much and start setting my alarm earlier to enjoy the mornings because I needed every ounce of sleep I could get. So basically, I would either go to bed when I could just no longer function or my nervous system honestly was so shot for the longest time that I would stay up later than I knew that I should because I needed that quietness at night after the kids were in bed to try to bring my nervous system down at the end of the day. And in the mornings, I would get up when the kids got up. I am remarkably thankful that after 15 years, my insomnia is so much better and I am no longer in survival mode every day. So I decided to finally work on my sleep patterns. Back in the day, my best sleep was between 9 p.m. and midnight. So for the purpose of this challenge, I decided to start by going to bed at 10 and I set my alarm for six in the morning. So I started out doing well on this challenge by getting to bed by midnight and getting up at eight. I was also making sure I was getting into bed with enough time to read and settle down because it takes me a while to fall asleep, so I know I need a longer time to be in bed before falling asleep. Also, you can enjoy some song recommendations that I have in some of these screenshots. It's 10.15 and I'm in bed. Not quite going to bed yet actively, but I'm in like beginning stages of it. So it's day two and I woke up feeling very groggy this morning. So either yesterday was a really full day for me and so I was just tired or eight hours isn't really what I need and I need more or less. I've heard that sleep cycles are supposed to go in like hour and a half cycles. So that typically means like seven and a half hours or nine hours is better. I think I'm gonna try to get eight and a half hours, see if that works. Um, I know everybody is different, so we'll see. That's my update on day two. After spending the last year and a half, two years, working on my physical health and my mental health, Going to bed at 10 actually was very easy and that surprised me. I thought it would be more of a struggle to make myself go to bed at 10. But after working so much on my nervous system and my physical health, it actually wasn't that bad. Going to bed at 10 was pretty easy. Getting up at six also surprised me that it was not as difficult. The first night I set my alarm and I was just dreading it going off, but it actually reminded me of why I like the earlier morning. There's just a crispness to the air and that feeling of early morning is just very invigorating and life-giving to me. And just the light changing with the sun coming up and the way the house is just quiet and still, I love that. I also really loved being awake before my kids because then I was able to get dressed, make my coffee and sit down for a minute and then be able to greet them with a smile and already be awakened in there when they came in. There's nothing wrong with 
getting up when your kids get up. So if that is you, that is fine. And if that works for your family, that is fine. That is what I needed for a very long time. But for me, it was really nice getting back to something that I really enjoyed getting up earlier. So I tried eight and a half hours of sleep and that still was not the solution. I ended up going to bed late one night, but still getting eight and a half hours of sleep. Each of those first three days, I had woken up with a headache, and so I decided I needed to reset, let my body get the rest that it needed by turning off my alarms. That night and the next, I naturally woke up after nine hours of sleep with no headaches. By then, it was the weekend, and I continued to follow my natural sleeping schedule with plans to start up again Sunday night before I started back to work. I went to bed in time to get nine hours of sleep and woke up feeling pretty great. At this point, I had decided maybe a regular sleep schedule was not what I needed and that I could fluctuate between seven and a half hours or nine hours depending on my schedule and my tiredness level. So unfortunately, after the first day back at work for my vacation, this is where we're at. Now I have switched to the seven and a half hours of sleep or nine being the goal, but unfortunately this is not going to make either of those, so they need to work on getting to bed a little bit earlier. After that late night and a long day of work the next day, I was exhausted and got to bed early that night getting nearly nine hours of sleep. After that I settled into more of the seven and a half hours of sleep each night, probably more out of habit of staying up later than I would like to. Let's say this is all still a work in progress and I'm continuing this challenge to give myself good sleep habits so that I can care for myself better. So after four days, my kids started waking up a little bit earlier and then my youngest got sick and then I got sick. So I ended up adjusting my alarm from six to seven. I figured that the whole goal of this challenge is to get my sleep patterns back to a way that works for my body and my brain. And sometimes when we're sick or otherwise not getting as much sleep, we have to adjust it. Then school started for my boys and that is a whole other level of routines and changing. I think it's going to take some time to kind of get into our school routine and that whole morning routine. And then I can adjust my morning sleep based on that. In the meantime, I am still setting my alarm for seven. I do want to get to where I am back to getting up for my kids, if possible, their sleep patterns kind of change too. But also keeping in mind that my needs might change and the needs of the family might change too, and that's okay. All in all, I'm really glad that I decided to try the sleep challenge and to actively work on my sleep patterns. It wasn't quite as dramatic as I thought it would be. I thought it would be like, oh wow, like revolutionizing my sleep or all these things. But it's often the small steps that actually can make the biggest impact, whether it is on our mental health or physical health or family dynamics or whatever it is. So I've already noticed a few of those things and I'm excited to see that continue. It's been so good to do this for myself, to nourish my body and honoring the amount of sleep that my body needs and also to honor and nourish my soul because my soul likes mornings and I haven't been able to enjoy that in a long time. I definitely plan to keep this up. Thanks for following along on our sleep journey and the new things we're trying and new habits we're building. Welcome back. Sleep. Here we are. I have my kitty cat. Ow! Watch your claw.